Ooh. Ah, nothing like some good old Usher to wake you up. Oh boy, gosh darn, gets me every time. Well, good morning to you guys too. We are gonna get started with Harvest. Why are you in your underwear still? Why are you in my kitchen? I came for the donuts. I just woke up. Go get your clothes on, we got Harvest today. Who let you in the house? I'm your brother, I have a key. True, I think I left the back door unlocked anyways, but you probably didn't see that. Anyways, uh, let me take a couple donuts. We're gonna get this thing started. We got some loan payments due. We're down to negative $44,000 right now so plan is we're gonna pay we're gonna sell enough grain corn to pay off the rest of the loan and then everything else is going to the bin because in december commodity prices are gonna rise sound like a plan that sounds like a perfect plan to me i've already went out there and did a checkup on the 8520 okay oil good i know the combine used a little bit of oil you add some oil to the combine i didn't do the check over i'm not the one driving it okay everything's looking good belt tension's looking good of course tailings clean grain elevator they're all tight should be good everything looking ready to go for corn yeah I'm, I'm thinking so i checked oil and everything all these belts looking good to go i think we're good to go i did grease the feed accelerator there though that was i think we forgot to grease that is that you that forgot to grease that i haven't touched this new combine yet so that'd be you boss man okay let's head out to the field you forget to feed the cows no <laughs> looking Maybe. pretty hungry over there i talked to boss man brody and he should be here with the red combine any second you take that home do some greasing on that thing and some adjustments quick so he took it home in the shop while we got some rain Nate, hey, young you on radio? jinx you owe me a soda hey we're um i can't get into this field with the fence man you're right you have to go to the top portion where we have that little drop driveway oh yeah yeah and that'd right, be the that's best right. way to get in there okay i'll head up there and we'll just have to unhook the header and get it in over there then pretty much this whole field is guarded by fence and i can't fit a 12 row header through that fence so we gotta pull in the field to actually get this thing unloaded we're gonna have to run over a little bit of corn we have a lot of acres of corn we got beans knocked out a little bit of corn last episode but i mean guys we've got a lot of acres of corn to knock out here so i'm hoping it's gonna yield good though because the last stuff yielded like 195 i was hoping to push it a little more but we'll see. Okay, so here's the gate we're going to turn in. I'm trying to swing as wide as possible here. And I can just barely fit the combine through here. There's no way I could fit it through with a 12-row corn head. Am I looking good, Nate? Yep, go ahead. You're looking good. All right, perfect. Just pull it straight. Okay. And I th Nate, are we going to have to run over some corn here? I'm thinking we may have to. Uh, we're going to have to definitely at least a little bit but some sounds better than none okay let's see basically i'm gonna try and pull this thing to the right here guys and just put it in the tree as far as possible that way it gives me enough room to get turned around there we go that should be good i'll get out climbing this tree branch basically disconnect her let's see if we can make this tight turn without ripping off my auger back there honestly i don't think we're gonna run over any corn here this might work out pretty good got her attached hydraulics are in should be good to go i'm gonna back her up here okay we're good to go and then basically crank on the header and i'm gonna just slowly dive into this corn just at an angle and we shouldn't knock down too too much of it if we go in at an angle here oh i think we got some decent corn we're up to 193 already this is how i am in real life when i'm harvesting corn guys as soon as i dig in 10 foot i'm just looking at the yield monitor that's not the right thing to do as a farmer because it takes time to adjust and it couldn't even be accurate but i am just staring at that yield monitor i don't know why maybe it's just a young farmer thing when we're just like so focused on that right away i don't know and there's brody perfect timing although he may have a little trouble getting through that gate uh, and there's nate with a green cart brody i i think it's doable man i think you can get over it is it okay well, we're gonna send it we're sending it there you go all right it worked there we go he just ain't getting back out no i'm not getting out <laughs> he's not getting back out nate i'm gonna open this up so we got a lot of room to turn around here sounds good to me basically we'll do the same thing guys i'm just gonna dive into this corn here just at an angle and we'll try not to knock over too much of it it's not bad corn we're up to 195 brody what are you yielding over there uh we're yielding 190 3.3 bushels to the acre okay, right now. Okay, not so. bad. That's a fence row no. too. We had a dry summer, so that stuff probably burned up a little more. Okay, so I'm going to knock out this little patch right here. That way we got like, just, this is going to be our turnaround point for semis, trucks, wagons, grain carts. This will be our little area over here. We'll just knock this out quick. Nate, did you switch out the uh, the tractors there, man? Yes, I did. Oh, <laughs> he put the two track on the wagons. I've never seen that before. We'll run her though. That two track has no power for this grain cart. I learned that yesterday. Seriously? Yep, it struggled terribly. Okay, first unload of the day. Dumping on Nate here. So he did change the magnum out. He just doesn't like the two track. Must just not have enough power. I'm assuming it's more of the mod because an 8520 in real life should easily be able to handle that was a bushel grain cart. Not easily, but it should be able to handle it just fine. Okay, Nate, should be good to go. Just go unload Brody. I got enough room in my tank to keep on rolling.
one. Sounds good. Well, if you get full, just go ahead and dump it in the grain cart. Done for. Okay, we are done with that little plot there. Needs unloading the wagons. And then if you guys look on the yield monitor here, this is how things are yielding. Along the road doesn't look as good, but then it looks like Brody's finding some good ground over here. It's yielding pretty well over there once you get into the greens and stuff. So it'll be interesting to see how the whole field yields. If we look at soil type though, yeah. Okay, so once you get into the sand here, the loam sand, it doesn't yield as good. Because if you go back to soil maps, here's where the bad yield is. So I'm guessing like right through here is going to be bad yield. The rest of the field is going to be good. Now let's go look at our soil types over on the field we rent over here. Oh, yeah, there's kind of a good amount of sand on that field too. So through the middle, it'll be good yielding. On the edges, it won't be that good. So like this stuff along the edge here, it's it's probably not going to be the best yield. I'm guessing because we're getting into some sa sandy stuff here. And we'll do some unloading on the go with Nate. Does anybody on the radio know, is the bushel per acre down the bottom, is that your average? Like across Across the acres you harvested or is that like instant do you think i think it's instant gotcha yeah because right now yields going down we're in the sandy stuff but it should start going up nate i'm empty man there we go it should start going up and yield once we get to the good ground up here oh yeah so we're starting to get to almost close to 198 bushel you can see on the map on the bottom left hand corner we're in the green we're in the good good ground over here she's yielding question i have is you guys think we could run a 16 row header on a 98 70 i feel like we could i don't know i feel like that's pushing it but you could definitely try uh, i we could maybe get a we could maybe get a demo from uh from mr buck over there at john deere go for it that'd be interesting to see if it actually works or not yeah okay we got a worker going doing his thing there so i can go fly the drone okay i'm up in the drone i got the drone going here and we are unloading unloading on nate right now and both of our wagons are full currently and we are rolling brody's in the 12 row case and this john deere is rolling 12 row things are going good nate's about full in the front it looks like i gotta slow the drone down a little bit let him pass there oh yeah things are looking good we are cruising okay so the 8520t this is like i don't know i'm gonna take it to the elevator but both these wagons are completely full right now two track to the elevator and wagons is not the best idea and nate says this thing doesn't have enough power um with two tracks he doesn't like it so maybe we'll trade for a wheel wheeled version i'm not sure okay we're gonna fire this thing up we'll see if she can pull her but we're going all the way to the elevator with this load turn the beacons on flashers on it feels like she's got some power underneath her we'll see if we can get up to speed here there we go we'll drop her in road gear here i mean it doesn't have that bad of power it feels like it's not terrible although if nate wants to run the case on there we're definitely not going to pull a two track down the road with wagons i think what we'll probably have to do is put it on the four wheel drive the steiger we're going to use that for some fall tillage and stuff but maybe we'll use the 8520t for some like tillage and throw the steiger on the wagons right now really what we probably need is either like a semi or just like another front wheel assist tractor to pull wagons for now i'm going to downshift we're just going to park this right here get out disconnect the wagon i'm going to pull the tractor up shoot nate's going to be full soon actually probably so for now i'm just going to park the tractor here we're going to get the stagger out and we're going to put this on the wagons it's row crop it's better it's better than running tracks although you know what we could do is we could throw this tractor on the grain cart and then throw the magnums that says a higher road speed on the wagons that's what we probably could do so throw this tractor on the grain cart because we got a bto in the rear nate are you full yep okay i'll try and get back as fast as possible with the wagons no need you got a semi there yep 10-4. I went and just borrowed it from the company, my company. We are rolling. A little, just a little bit overkill here, but you can always use a big horse up front with two wagons. We sure know what happens if you can't make it up a hill. That's for sure. Okay, we will pull in here, start selling this stuff. I got to make sure I pull in completely straight because we want to get both. You got to basically do it perfect because I want to get both those wagons at the same time unloading. It's going to be a little tough. If I go a little further, I think I can do it. Right there, first one. Second one, alone. Perfect. There we go. And then if we look at the price of corn in December, the price is going to rise to an insane level in December. So everything else is going to go in the bins. But currently, like, we're making a lot of money from this corn already. But now that we have positive cash, actually, everything else is just going right into the bins. There we go. $106,000 from two loads. I wish this was real life, man. I wish this was real life. That'd be a lot of money there. Nate, you on CB there? Yep. Hey, so everything else is going to go into our bins so i'm thinking we need to get the auger set up um we can either we could probably put the auger auger on that alice should have enough horse to get it up there and then everything else will auger up into the bins once one bin gets full transfer the auger to the other bin start filling the other bin sounds good i would just get your butt back over here because i've already filled the semi truck up and 
This wagon is 62% full. Okay, I'm coming. These boys are rolling on this field. I'm guessing they don't probably have that many acres left. Yeah, honestly, they don't have much left on this field. They're knocking it out quick. Okay, for now, we're gonna park the tractor and wagons right there. I'm gonna sprint across the road. Now I gotta get this auger set up because everything is gonna be full real soon. Or we could throw the 420 on it, but we'll throw we'll throw the Alice on the auger. Get her started up. Now I do need to throw some fuel on her real quick. There we go, fuel her up. Okay, we got the auger hooked up. So basically, I'm gonna get it situated. It'd be nice to have Nate over here actually to help me with this. But he's around Grand Car right now, so it's gonna be kind of a one-man job here. We'll start raising the auger here. See if we can get her up there. Basically, I need to get it right over the bin. Do you guys have a fuel barrel at your farm? I just looked down at my combines uh, on on E, so I need some fuel. Brody, just go right in front of the shop. There's a fuel barrel right right by the American flag, kind of. All right, I'll be over there once I finish this path. Don't forget to drop the envelope of 10 grand inside the office for using our fuel. You're funny, I'm helping you out, so I get fuel for free. No. Nope. Oh, looks like I'm running to <laughs> Casey's. I was say, she was gonna charge about 10 grand there, bud. Okay, so we need to climb the bin real quick, open the lid. Okay, so basically I was off a little bit. I'm gonna keep coming back until we're just about perfect here. Okay, that should work good. We should be lined up, and bin should be ready to go to start unloading some grain in there. Looks like Nate, I think, is pulling around with the wagon. Wagons here. We'll see if this thing unloads. Okay, Nate. Yep, keep going. Right about there. And there we go. Nate's unloading. And it's unloading in the bin. Perfect. If we walk up to the bin, we should be able to see. Yep, there we go. It's filling. 56, 50, 60 bushel, 70 bushel. Perfect. She's unloading. So I'm checking in on these guys on the drone. It's a couple hours later. And we're about done with the home farms. Like, this is it. We've got maybe one more pass. John Deere's rolling. Nate's actually running the grain cart right now. And he's just grain carting everything all the way to the bin and then basically after this field we'll have one more giant field that we rent to harvest and that is field 144 this is gonna be insane it's gonna take us a while to harvest this field hopefully we can get her done okay guys new day new month it is december 1st we had rain come in and now it's turned to snow which means it's gonna be a muddy mess out there and we still have that big field to harvest the good thing is is it's December and the price of corn is up a ton. We're realizing there wasn't as much corn out in the countryside as we thought. And so we kind of have tight corn stocks right now, which means corn price is up which is good. The only thing is we're going to be harvesting in horrible conditions and on this map, the lighting is not good like at all. Like I wish it was brighter. The whole map was brighter. So I apologize about it. It's going to look kind of cloudy, kind of dark. Other, otherwise, we got to get through this snow. We got to get harvesting this stuff. So the plan is, is I have $10,000 right now. We have some grain in the bin we could sell, but we're going to go start harvesting that corn. We're going to sell the grain off of it. Once we get enough cash, we're going to buy one or maybe two semis and grain trailers because um, the amount of income we're gonna get off that farm is insane and then with those grain trailers we're gonna haul the rest of our corn to the elevator because right now the price is just really good at the elevator so that is the plan we're gonna need both combines going it's just me and nate today and we got a lot of corn to move a lot of bushels oh boy are we gonna clear that railroad holy toledo we just barely cleared it so we have like a 12 mile drive up north to the farm once we get to that farm we're gonna start combine with a deer and then we're gonna go back and get the case combine you know it would be super nice to get another combine from deer right there or at least demo or rent one that'd be pretty darn handy right now we could run three combines get this knocked out before the snow really starts setting in okay here we are we have a lot of acres to knock out here this is a lot i gotta find a place to kind of pull in here and we're gonna get started on this field see nate's got a full corn head he's just gonna hop in there and we're actually renting this combine for brody right now he's done with his stuff he's just gonna let us rent this combine okay we got the corn head on fire her up and i'm just gonna like clear this little corner so we got enough room to turn all the equipment around oh this might be some good corn i can't believe it's this good even when it's this dry in the season we're racing 200 bushel an acre on the yield monitor there yeah we're over 200 i don't think we this this field must have caught some more rain because i don't think we have any corn go over 200 not bad not bad at all until you smoke a power pole and we're just gonna lightly dive into the corn and then head back that way we can clear this real nice yep this is gonna be some good corn here 200.8 bushels to the acre and we're harvesting in december which means it's pretty dry nate what do you see on your yield monitor about 197 Ooh. sometimes 180. you must have gotten into some worse corn over there 
Yeah, I'm in the, a little bit worse of the ground. Yeah. So, yeah, here's some good corn. Nate got into some rough spots over there. That must be some sand. I think out in the middle is where our good soil is. We are rolling. Boy, it'd be nice to have a farm like that right across from there. Maybe one day. We'll see. Maybe this corn yields enough. We're still holding above 200 bushel of acre, surprisingly. We're in some of the rougher part of the soil over here. Okay, we are basically full. I'm going to have to wait till Nate gets here. Nate went and ran and grabbed a semi. I might run and grab the grain cart. And we're also using Brody's semi, actually. We're running a semi. Like I said, we don't have much cash right now. Nate's got a semi for his trucking company. Brody's done with Harvest, so he's letting us use his semi here in his Wilson Grain trailer. But I'm trying to save as much money as possible with not going into as much debt here until we get some more cash, which we've got a lot of bushels in the bin and a lot of bushels in the field yet. And because we're so far away, wagons don't really work the best. Like, it would take a while to move all the screen with wagons. So semis is kind of where it's at, at least on this farm. And there we go. We're just going to pull up right behind Nate. Okay, so the combine, I'm completely full. Nate's got the grain cart up here. I'm going to dump into him real quick and then we're gonna keep on rolling. Gosh, the one thing I hate about the in cap view is you can't see crap. I literally can't see in front of me unless maybe it's the, maybe I can tilt that, that sun visor up. Maybe I accidentally tilted that down. I'm not sure. Okay, so currently we've got two combines going, guys. I think after I sell this load of corn, we're going to take the money. We're going to go buy like a used combine to have three combines run across this field to just get it harvested super quick. That means that'll leave us with two combines because one of them we're using as Brody's for custom harvest. After the season, we'll have two combines, which we really need. It's just we got a large field here and we got to keep on moving. And Nate's unloading, Nate's topping me off, and then we're gonna go sell this. I'm telling you guys right now, we're gonna have a lot of money once we harvest this field, uh, because commodity prices are super high. So, we'll see what happens. Dude, I love this Freightliner, guys. This thing flies, it's got the power behind it, it's automatic, which is kinda nice. And it sounds, oh gosh, keep on the road. And it sounds pretty good. Can't get any greener. Welcome to Tahitian. So this is where they have the best prices, over in Tahitian where we sell all of our green. Until you smoke a sign right there. Okay, we'll start the automatic tarp. Tarp is off, and we should make a lot of money from this load, I'm hoping. I mean, we should get a, a real good amount. Let's see, Poland is right here. There we go. We'll pull in. We'll start unloading her. There we go. Is it only the front hopper that's being unloaded? Yeah, only so only the front hopper's being unloaded, and then we'll unload the rear hopper. So we got sixty-six thousand dollars for the front hopper. So the rear hopper is gonna be another like sixty-six thousand dollars. So we're at like one thirty, one one thirty-five, which is pretty good for a truck load of corn. Oh, that was eighty-four grand on the second hopper. Weird. Okay, boys, here's the deal. There was a ninety-six ten sitting on this lot for about like twenty-three grand or twenty-four grand. This thing is high houred. My plan with this is just to run it till the wheels fall off like we'll just see how many hours we can get for 20 grand i mean this has 5,000 hours across it it needs a lot of parts replaced and then they have the 608c for like 25 grand um this has been used pretty good too obviously but for 50 grand we're all in on this combine we're just gonna see how long it'll last it's a 9610 it's a little older it's not a sts we'll see what happens here we're just gonna run her because we need a third combine here run on this field because we got a blizzard coming tomorrow so it's got green star to it i mean it's older it's got green star but i think this thing's gonna run pretty good for us nate's gonna be mad though because he's gonna have a tough time keeping up nate you got two trucks full i don't even have one full that's why we need a third combine baby we gotta keep him moving it look 9610 it's got green star on it i mean it's been going through by the shop we know some things need replaced on it but i think this this could help us out that way we'll own two combines we'll be renting a third one from brody okay we've got these two combines knocking out this end of the field i'm gonna start the combine over here knocking out this end of the field nate's probably gonna have a tough time keeping up but we gotta keep her moving well it's the next morning now nate already got one of the combines rolling you guys can see we got a good amount of snow overnight but i mean we were losing yield out the back of the combine since we're getting too wet here now stuff should harvest pretty good so i'm gonna fire up the 9610 we got like an inch of snow on the crown it's actually beautiful out this morning though i'm gonna start her up we'll see if she starts come on old girl she's a little chilly there we go and we are combine i think guys i really think we lost some yield on this field because right now we're running 167 168 like you don't lose in real life you don't lose 40 well 30 bushels oh, we're getting up there i guess but boy the yield doesn't seem like it was like 200 like it was i feel like even through this snow we've lost some yield on this field which sucks but this is why you run a lot of combines you get it out early especially on beans corn it's probably not so bad okay so nate's got almost both these trailers full we are actually gonna be trucking over to poet right there across the street which is going to cut our driving time down so much and we can keep this grain going here poet's got close to the same 
same price as FS Grow Mark in town, but it's like literally across the road. So we're gonna we're gonna truck the poet there. We'll see if we can get the Kenworth fired up here. Come on, come on. She wants to go. There we go. And we'll make the turn in here. Oh yeah, this is definitely a lot better than driving 12 miles over to the other FS Grow Mark. It's just it's, this is a big complex. It's a lot to get through here. And we'll start unloading. Okay, I'm up in the drone right now. We currently have three combines going. We have the 9610 going and it's full. Yep, it's full right there. We have the 9870 full over there. And then we have Nate unloading the case combine with the grain cart over here. So we honestly probably should get a second grain cart at some point to keep up with these combines. But I mean, we have so many acres over there. The corn's not even loaded in because that's that far out. So we got to keep on rolling here. But this is going to be the end of today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, check out Nate's channel down below. Check out Brody Farm's channel down below. Both of them create farm sim content. Definitely check them out. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.